All right, so my message is titled Hosanna. Everybody says Hosanna. Or oh, say one more time, say Hosanna. All right, so uh, that was the shout of the multitudes when Jesus appeared on his way to Jerusalem. They shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The text is Matthew chapter 21 and verses 8 and 9. Matthew chapter 21 and verses 8 and 9. And this is what it reads. And a very great multitude spread their cloths on the road, cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It's a very familiar statement. We have uh, proclaimed it many times, especially when we were children. Uh, Palm Sunday was a very beloved uh, time of celebration because we wave our palm branches and run around, walk around, go through the neighborhood uh, and, and just sing Hosanna, Hosanna. We are familiar with that declaration. And the multitudes who followed Jesus on this last week of his earthly ministry were shouting these words, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The question is, where did the multitudes get these words from? When they said Hosanna and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, what were they talking about? Where did they get the words from? Did they just make up the words or were the words found somewhere else? So today we're going to look at where they picked those words from. And the words that they declared were from the Old Testament, from the Psalms, particularly Psalm 118. And one, Psalm 118 was a thanksgiving psalm. It is also uh, believed that it was a messianic psalm. That means it spoke about the Messiah. And we're going to examine the phrases they used and in the context that it occurs in. So let's look at Psalm 118 and verse 25 and 26. Psalm 118, verse 25 and 26. And this is what it says. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. So this is where uh, they came up with a phrase that they shouted as Jesus Christ I was entering Jerusalem. So they didn't make up the words themselves. They were quoting Psalm 118. But then when you look at Psalm 118, what we just quoted, apart from the part that says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, uh, you don't see Hosanna there. You don't see Hosanna there. Now just to give you a little background, that Psalm 118 was a processional psalm. And when I say it's a processional psalm, the, 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 the Jews will sing it in procession. It's a marching psalm. And, uh, and so as they are marching to the temple, they will be reciting the psalm. Part of the psalm is sung when they are marching to the temple, and part of it is sung inside the temple. And the psalm is an antiphonal psalm. That means it's a call and response psalm. And a call and response psalm is a psalm where one person leads and says something and then 
other people respond to it. We are very familiar uh, uh, with sound because a lot of our songs uh, in our traditional setting uh, is a call and response. The leader sings the main tune and the people uh, respond. For example, uh, the familiar um, chorus we sing. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. That's the leader singing. Then the people respond. Because he's good and his mercy shall endure. So that's antiphonal. One person says something and then the people respond. So I want you to have that in mind because it has a bearing on understanding Psalm 118. It is antiphonal. A leader sings and the people respond. He sings and they respond. So that is what I want you to get as the background to Psalm 118. So now let us examine the words of uh, the psalm in verses 25. So you look somewhere in the middle of the psalm, Psalm 118, and you can take time and read the whole of the psalm, but somewhere there you see the phrase, Save now, I pray. Save now, I pray. This is what the people uh, were saying, and they said, Hosanna, as we say it in our language now. In Hebrew, the word save is Hoshia. Hoshia. And I pray is na. Hoshia, na. Hoshia, na. So that's what they were saying in Hebrew. Uh, and, and so the Hoshia is save. I pray or I ask na. Now the word na is, a, is an interesting word because it doesn't necessarily mean prayer. But it indicates prayer. So it is, uh, it's, if it was in, in uh, our language, like, like Fanti, it would be something like Jihen, Jiheno, Jiheno. If it was in Ga, Heremawoe. Save us now. Save us now. Deliver us now. But you know, if somebody was speaking in Fanti and he said, Jihen O, the O is not pray. What does the O mean? The O mean is a statement of intensity. It's a statement of intensity. Uh, it means save us. Please save us right now. Save us. We beg you. It's all, all of that is the O or Heremo A. Heremo A. The A is not prayer as we call prayer, but it brings intensity to save us. So that's how the Na is in the Hebrew. Hoshia, Na. Hoshia, Na. Save us. Na. Save us. O. Save us. A. I, I, are you following it? I just want you to understand what they were saying. So they were not just waving branches and say, Hosanna, Hosanna. No, they were calling for something to happen right now. Save us. Save us. Save us now. Save us now. Save us, please. Deliver us, please. And they were saying that to Jesus Christ. Now, if you were there and you heard them, and then you heard the rest of the statement, what they joined it to, you will know exactly what they were talking about. Because when they said, save us now, they could have stopped. But then they go back and quote Psalm 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They are saying, this is the one who will come and save us. This is the one who brings deliverance. So, on that day, the people of the Jews, or the Hebrews, were declaring their expectation for salvation. Now, you have to understand that all of this is happening close to the festival of Passover. Because the next week is Passover. Jesus is going to be, uh, Passover is going to be celebrated. 
What was Passover about? Passover celebrates the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. And that's the festival Jesus is going to. The people are now saying, save us now. Basically, as God delivered us from the Egyptians, so must you also deliver us. And they saw Jesus Christ as the one who will bring deliverance. Now, I'm going to take time to go back to Psalm 18. And this time, we will not just look at verse 25 where they say, they quote, save us, I pray, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I want us to look a little further. So we're going to start from verse 17 of Psalm 18. Verse 17 of Psalm 18. And it reads, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. I love this. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the doing, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. So what is all of that about? Now I will try and break it down. Remember when I started, I said that the psalm is antiphonal. How many of you remember when I said antiphonal? It's a word you can use once in a while. I, I throw these words in just to improve vocabulary. You can tell somebody, we want to have an antiphonal conversation. <laughs> so, so I said the psalm is antiphonal. And when I say antiphonal, it means it's a call and response. One person says, it's like, oh, say, yeah. One person says, then the people respond, yeah, yeah. That is antiphonal, a call and response. So when you read the psalm, I said it's antiphonal. So there is a part of the psalm where you see the personal singular pronoun used, I or me. And then there is a part of the psalm where you hear the plural pro pronoun like we, our. So when it says I, one person is speaking. When it says we, the people are responding. I hope you get that. All right. So I'm going to read the psalm to you again. And uh, we will start from verse 70. I'll take it verse by verse. And, uh, and you would hear that it starts with I. And then the second part will go to we. All right. Now, when we read the I... There is somebody supposed to be saying that. I want you to imagine these, this is what Jesus is saying. This is what he's saying. Because in the second part, we'll hear the people responding to what he's saying. I hope you get that. Because it's a messianic psalm. This is the caller. This is what he's saying. And he begins in verse 17. What did, does he say? I shall not die, but live to declare his works he didn't say we shall not die he says I so the person saying this is talking about resurrection resurrection I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord the speaker is talking about resurrection and I believe it is pointing to the resurrection of Jesus Christ I shall not die but live to declare the words of God. I know sometimes we quote it for ourselves uh, and it's appropriate, but I want you to hear it as the words of Jesus Christ calling, I shall not die, but live to declare the words of the Lord. That's resurrection. Then 
verse 18. The Lord has chastened me severely, but has not given me over to death. He's talking about suffering. Suffering. But suffering that will lead to redemption. Because the suffering would not lead to death or destruction. That is final destruction. So we see the theme of resurrection. We see suffering. Verse 19. Open to, to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them. Or I will go through them. Willingness to go through the process. So if it's Jesus saying these words, he's talking about his resurrection. He's talking about his suffering. He's talking about his willingness to take on the task ahead of him. And verse 20. This is the gate through which the righteous shall enter. He's talking about his death. His death. And then verse 21. I will praise you for you have answered me. He's talking about trust that God will deliver him from what is about to happen. So the speaker here, the one person is saying all of this. And remember all of it is I, 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 I. This is one person speaking. I shall not die but live to declare the word of the Lord. You have chastened me but you have not given me up to death. This is the gate and I'm ready to go into it. Uh, and, and, and he expresses all of that. Then we go to the second part of it, which is the response. So the response says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That means that this person who is making the first statement is going to be exalted. The stone that has been rejected is going to become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. You see, it says, I. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So something is happening and the people are acclaiming it and saying that this person will be exalted. The second response is what we we, we read, save now, O Lord, save now and send prosperity. Hoshia, na. Now, if you read that word in Hebrew, it is neither plural nor singular. But most translations will use the plural. Uh, the ESV says, save us, we pray, O Lord. Uh, NIV says, Lord, save us. Amplified version, save now, we beseech you. So you find that this is still the people responding. You are our redeemer. And he has declared, I will not die. I will go through the process and I will come back. And the people are saying, yes, we believe that. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Save us, O oh Lord. And then the third response. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Fourth response. God is the Lord. He has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. This one is very important. So, the people are saying, Lord God, bind the sacrifice to the horns of the altar. What does that mean? Remember, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And in Jewish practice, under the Old Testament, the sacrifice has to be attached to the horns of the altar. And the response say, Lord, bind the sacrifice. Jesus is now the sacrifice and he will be bound to the horns of the altar. And in doing that, he will complete the work of salvation. So when the people were shouting, Hoshiana, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
The disciples of Jesus didn't understand what was happening. For them, Jesus was having a good time. Jesus understood what was happening. But more than that, the Jewish scholars understood what was happening. The priest, the high priest, they studied the scriptures. They knew these people are not just singing a song randomly. They are quoting a messianic verse from Psalm 118. And they are saying, this guy is the son of God. This is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the one who will redeem us. This is the one who will save us. This is the one who will be bound to the altar. And this is the stone that we will reject, but God will accept. And they got so crazy, they said, we have to put a stop to that. But in saying we have to put a stop to that, they didn't know they were fulfilling the prophecy. They were going to reject him. And the stone which was rejected by Pilate, by Caiaphas, by everybody else, that stone that was rejected became the chief cornerstone. And for 2,000 years, he is the blessed one who comes in the name of the Lord. He is the redeemer who saves us from sin. He is the lamb that was bound to the altar, whose blood availed for us, so that in him we may have life and have it more abundantly. Hoshiana, Hosanna. Hosanna, Lord save us. And when the people cried, God heard. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, who came as the Redeemer of the Jews, also became the Savior of the entire world. His blood accepted on God's altar as a sacrifice and the payment for your sins so that you may have life and have it more abundantly so today when we also go about waving our palm branches shouting hosanna hosanna don't just think about having fun but think about the prophetic significance of what you are declaring you are saying jesus is the savior he's the anointed one the one who comes in the name of the lord and he is the one who will be the sacrifice that will be bound to the altar. And just after that, Jesus went to fulfill his ministry. Hosanna, the Savior, the Redeemer, is here. And he saves now. He doesn't save tomorrow. So when you come to him and say, Lord, save me. He will not say, ah, by the way, I have a few appointments, so let, let me come to your case next week. No. When you say, save me, he says, nah. Right now. You remember the thief on the cross? He said, I know you are the son of the living God. He was affirmed in the prophecy. I know you are the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Save me. Jesus said, nah, right now. You will be with me in paradise. Because salvation in Christ is now. It's now. It's urgently now. God doesn't postpone the day of salvation. He saves us the day, the moment, the hour. We call on Jesus Christ to be our Lord and our Savior. And in that moment, he becomes our Savior. But I want to highlight one more thing before I close. If you read the statement in Psalm 118, he said, save now, we pray. But there's a second part, which was not sung. Sent prosperity. Sent prosperity. So the one who saves also prospers. The one who saves also prospers. The one who saves us now can also prosper us now. He's the same Messiah. He's the one we're talking about. So when you receive Jesus Christ, 
as your savior, that's not the end of your story. He prospers you too. That means he makes your life better. Jesus Christ put it this way. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I make your life better qualitatively and quantitatively. I make your life better. Lord, save us. Lord, prosper us. So there will be peace in our marriages. There will be health in our bodies. There will be strength in our bodies. There will be money in our pocket. There will be favor for the work of our hands. That we may prosper in all that we do. The same Lord who comes to save is the same Lord who comes to prosper us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of of the Lord and in that call and response we hear the words of Jesus and we hear the prayer of the people and this morning the same thing can happen we've heard the word of the Lord we must hear the response of the people normally we'll respond with prayer we know he can save so we say save us he can prosper prosper us. He can bless. Bless us. He can heal. Heal us. We must always respond to what the Lord offers us. This morning before I sit down, if you are here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if he's not in your heart, if Jesus doesn't live inside of you, you can invite him to come and live inside of you. He can save you now. Not tomorrow. So we're going to pray two prayers. First we're going to pray for those who need Jesus Christ as Savior from sin. And secondly we're going to pray for those who need Jesus Christ to prosper them. Because both are the work of the Messiah. Let's bow our heads. If you are here this morning you say, Pastor, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want to be born again. I want to become a brand new person. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to start a new life in Christ. I want to be sure that when I die, I'm going to heaven. If that's your prayer and that's your desire, Jesus is here to save you. So with every head bowed, if you are here this morning, you say, Pastor, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want to be born again. Just lift up your right hand wherever you are. I want my sins to be forgiven. Or maybe you prayed once some time ago to be saved, but you are not sure whether you are saved because your life has been haphazard and sometimes you backslide and you go back and you, you just want to be sure that Christ has given you salvation. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. You need assurance of salvation. You need Christ to come into your life wherever you are. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Those of you with your hand up, I want you to put your hand upon your chest, on your heart, your hand on your heart as we pray. And the whole church will join us in this prayer. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I ask you, Father, have mercy on me. Wash me from my sins. Give me a new life. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you for redemption in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. The ushers take note of everybody who, wrote, who uh, received Jesus Christ. And let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. <clears throat> Hosanna, Hoshiana is not only save us from sin, but save us from everything that harasses us. Everything that makes our life unbearable. It could be sickness. It could be disease. It could be some 
peace, uh, some troubled mind. It could be harassment. It could be sleeplessness. Whatever it is, you want to call on the Lord and say, Lord, save me and send prosperity. Are you ready to do that? Let's get up for a moment, just a minute or so, and let us pray. And lift up your hands to God. Wave your branches. Wave your palm branch. Wave your palm branch. That's what they were doing in that prayer. And say, save me, Lord. And send prosperity. Save me, Lord. And send prosperity. Deliver me, O oh Lord. And send prosperity. Bless me, Lord. And send prosperity. Send abundance. Send healing. Send favor. Send open doors. Deliver me, O oh God. Deliver me, O oh Lord. Deliver me, O oh Lord. Deliver me, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. And send help to me. Send help to me. Send deliverance to me. Be my helper. Be my deliverer. Be my healer. Now begin to talk to the Lord. Just talk to him. He's sending help. He's sending help. He's sending prosperity. He's sending favor. He's sending increase. He's sending a turnaround. He's sending abundance. Save now, Lord. Save now, Lord. Bless now, Lord. Prosper now, Lord. Your people call upon you, Lord Jesus. Bless them now. Step into their lives now. Deliver them now. Heal them now. Increase them now. And Father, we thank you. For Jesus who comes into our lives to give us life an abundant life. Today we receive his help, we receive his deliverance, we receive his prosperity, we receive his abundance, we receive his favor in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Give the Lord praise. Somebody celebrate the Lord. Amen.